you a fan of this podcast? Do you wish there was even more juicy content for you to sink your ears into? Well, there is. You can become a premium member of this podcast for $5.99 a month and get full access to an archive of over 50 bonus episodes. Additionally, we release a bonus episode every single month. That's a ton of extra content, including my personal interior design diaries, extra tips, my talking about trends, and so much more. Additionally, you'll be keeping us on the airwaves each and every week because your premium membership money goes directly back to making this podcast amazing. Check us out at affordableinteriordesign.com, click on podcast to learn more and to become a premium member today. need a high-end designer or a lot of money to get a luxe look be your own interior designer this is affordable interior design the podcast here's your host betsy Hellman. it's my absolute favorite season summertime 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 and i am having so much fun i am trying to squeeze magical moments out of every minute of sunshine. I'm always trying to convince my family, let's eat on the patio. My husband's like, it's too hot. My kids are like, we don't want to carry everything out there. I convince them it's worth it. It's worth it. I got so into the summertime spirit that I was taking Pilates with my Pilates teacher and she had on this adorable crop top. I am not of the age or of the body type to be wearing a crop top, but I was really inspired. And I said, Elizabeth, where did you get that outfit? Now, keep in mind, this is a woman who does Pilates all day, every day, and I do Pilates twice a month. So I said, Elizabeth, where'd you get that outfit? And she said, she got it at Old Navy. So I immediately went online to Old Navy. I got myself a crop top and some jogger, like harem pants. I got the exact Elizabeth look. And that is what I'm currently wearing today. Uh, I am wearing this on the airwaves and I know, yes, I have a YouTube channel. So now you can go see what I'm wearing (laughs) on YouTube, but I'm telling you this because as I'm recording, I'm sitting in a chair, so you can't see my tummy roll hanging out from under my crop top, but I was just so inspired. I'm hot. I want to wear less clothes. I want to live like I'm 25. Just let me have my $19 crop top dream. And I'll only wear it when recording or dusting my house because I can't take this muffin top on the road. I'll have to do a lot more Pilates to look like Elizabeth. But I'm just saying that, you know, sometimes we fence ourselves in, whether it's our age, our body type, whatever. And I've decided to liberate myself from my personal issues around crop tops and just lean in, lean in. Uh, What are you leaning into this summer? Iced tea, margaritas, crop tops, harem pants, uh, flip-flops. I want to hear all about it. Send me inspiration. Send me questions. Affordableinteriordesign.com slash podcast. More importantly, I want to hear and see what you're up to and make sure to spread the word about the podcast. In the summer months, a lot of people, podcasters specifically, take off, right? Because not as many people listen, they're on vacation, they might be out of their normal routine, and so podcasts just don't factor in as much. And so they see the listenership dip and they decide, ugh, you know, I'm going to take a much needed break. Not me. I'm podcasting week after week. I'm still working on the design business, teaching in the academy every week, and I need to see the love. So make sure you tell your friends, your family about this podcast so our numbers don't experience the summer slump that is typically inevitable. Yeah, and don't forget to go over to our YouTube channel. Again, you can see the $19 wrinkled uh, Pilates top. Yes, yes, yes. And much, much more. Most importantly, you can see pictures that illustrate the topics we're talking about because interior design is a visual medium. So for years, it has been a struggle to visually paint that picture exclusively. So many of you guys have said, Betsy, we just want to see the picture. Picture is worth a thousand words and you're using too many words to show me what's going on. 
Don't worry, guys. There's a YouTube channel for that. Go to affordableinteriordesign.com slash links, and there you'll see the links to the YouTube channel, etc. I also have some very exciting news coming up about uh, rebranding and other things that we're doing. We're changing our name. We're growing and developing. This summer, uh, we've seen a real resurgence in clients, and basically all the COVID slump is over, and everybody's back redecorating with a vengeance. So our team has grown from 7 to 11. And I'm really excited to share even more news with you. So that will be coming up next month. In the meanwhile, let's dig into this mailbag, shall we? My first question comes from Derek. Derek is in Denver some of the time, and I guess he's in Palm Springs others of the time. Must be nice. Both places are amazing. Uh, So let's hear more about your conundrum, Derek. Hi, Betsy. I've listened to your podcast for over a year, and when I heard about your poop water incident, I had to write in. Oh, thanks, Derek. We have a vacation rental in Palm Springs, California, and last month, we found out that the upstairs unit flooded our place with, you guessed it, poop water. Everything the water touched, we have to replace. We are losing carpet, rugs, furniture, etc., The silver lining is that our place was built in the 70s, and it did look a bit dated. So we are going to do a whole renovation, and insurance will cover a lot of the costs. But trying to manage this from our home in Denver, Colorado, is a huge headache. I don't hear a lot on your podcast about Airbnb or rental properties. Since we get rentals based on pictures, we are drawn to dramatic colors or styles. I'm sure that you are aware that Palm Springs is the capital of mid-century design, and we want to lean into that. It's a little over the top, and it's not what we would do in our own home, but guests love the mid-century vibe of our unit. Here is a link to our two-bedroom, two-bathroom condo. And guys, if you want to check out this link, you will want to go to our YouTube page. You'll find the link at affordableinteriordesign.com slash links. That way you can see all the pictures of Derek's space. Additionally, he is sharing a mood board of his new inspiration that I think will be really cool for you all to check out. So you won't want to miss that. Head over to our YouTube channel and we'll post it all right there. All right, back to the question. We will be getting rid of the laminate flooring and we've decided to go with a polished concrete. We will be replacing the dining area with a burnt orange since the red is not really a mid-century color and we want to tie in the orange living area with the dining area. We're going to do the kitchen ourselves with an Ikea kitchen. We want to do white gloss cabinets and have gold accents throughout. Since our kitchen is a small galley kitchen, we thought white would make it feel bigger. I'm in love with gold sinks and a gold faucet. I'm confused. If we go with a white mid-century modern backsplash, is that something you would suggest? Or should we go bolder with maybe another color? I feel like the white clean look with hints of gold will be good, but I worry it won't stand out in pictures. It may be too boring. What do you think? Are we being too boring with white on white on white? Another issue with the kitchen is that all the appliances are stainless steel. Is it okay to do a gold sink? faucet, finishes, and light fixture with stainless steel? And if so, I'm worried about trying to match all these golds. There's brush golds, brass gold, and just gold gold. How close do we have to match light fixtures with the faucet or the sink? Betsy, I have one question for you unrelated to the kitchen. Okay, so we'll get there in just a second. Let's answer this kitchen question. So first of all, thanks for sharing your listing. And yes, I totally agree with you. When in Rome, you've got to represent. And when people are going to Palm Springs, they expect a mid-century modern look, especially if the architecture is from that era. So I think you're doing just the right thing by leaning in and you're right. You want this to pop in pictures. And I think it really does. I mean, looking at the pictures from your Airbnb, you have nice oversized art, you have ceramic lamps, you have like a warm wall tone. Everything is really stylish and looks super inviting. My one worry is that it is very, very warm. You have these deep oranges with this wallpaper treatment that's graphic, with the dining chairs, with the lamps, with the drapes. I think it's overly orange. And we need to be thinking about our 60, 30, 10. We need to be doing a mix of warm as well as cool. So right now, I'm only seeing that your accent color 
is a version of orange. And there are several different types of orange in this room. And there might be some red as well. It's hard to tell from the imagery. But we need to cool this place down. Other than that, I think it looks stylish and quite inviting. Now, you didn't mention anything about the countertops, as I recall in your email. So I do think that you should go with the white Ikea cabinetry because that is one of the more durable finishes for the doors that they offer. But I think that just keeping the backsplash a white tile is a lost opportunity. I would keep the space really very neutral with maybe a white Ikea cabinet, maybe a new countertop that is kind of a marble effect with some gray striation, and then doing something more exciting with the backsplash because I think that it will help to give it some character. Now, you do not have to match the stainless steel with the gold fixtures, but you do need to keep the gold throughout. So looking into the living room, looking at the doors, the hinges, things like that, you'd want to be changing those out for gold as well, because right now I'm seeing that your knobs are in the silver family. I do not mix cool and warm metals, cool being silvers, warms being golds or brasses. I will mix black metals or dark metals, I call them, wrought irons, oil rub, bronze, with either the silvers or with the brasses. Now, how stuck are you on these brasses? Because I think it's going to open up quite a few issues. I mean, you're going to have all these brass accents. You're going to have all these brass light fixtures. And then you have silver doorknobs, silver hinges. How much change do you want to make? I would lean into the silver instead, and I would do the silver black combo to give it a little bit more personality. But I think the silver black is going to be a much stronger and much more timeless choice than the brass gold. That's just my two cents, Derek. But I love this place. You are making me want to come back to Palm Springs and stay. The last time I came, I stayed at a resort. It was perfectly lovely, but didn't really have much flavor. But it was a true missed opportunity. I booked too late to stay at that Jonathan Adler Hotel. I looked into it, but that place books up way in advance. And I was there for a wedding, so my dates were inflexible. But as many of you know, if I dug down to my heart of hearts, my true best self, my personal style is like a mod kind of uh, retro, all things vintage. I love Formica. I love kidney shaped coffee tables. I love over the top graphic wallpaper. That's just what makes my heart sing. I never get to design in that style, not even for my own home because it's a lot a lot of look. But um, but I love that you're really embracing it. And I think it's so fun in this context, in this town to, as you say, really lean in. And now it's time for a quick commercial break. Do you love this podcast? Do you wish you could learn even more? Well, we have an online class bundle. Our online class bundle is comprised of three online classes, beautifying your home for less, styling your home, and the fundamentals of feng shui. Each one of those three classes is between 30 and 45 minutes long and chock filled with visuals and tips, things that will help you to style your own space or help out with other spaces. Additionally, with the pack of three classes, you get an autographed copy of my book, Affordable Interior Design. You get all of that for only $99. Once again, that's the three online classes as well as the book for only $99. You just go to affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes. Once again, affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes to buy your bundle today. And if one of those classes sounded intriguing, but maybe you already have my book or some of the other topics are not of interest, you can buy the classes individually at that site as well. Each class is $40. So head over to affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes to get your bundle or your online class today. All right, let's get to your next question about mixing the golds and brasses. So as long as you stick with the warm metals, even though I don't want you doing the warm metals, didn't you hear what I just said a minute ago, Derek? As long as you stick with the warm metal family, I'm fine with you mixing polished, brushed. I do the same thing when I'm dealing with silvers as I want you to do. You know, you have brushed nickel for your um, handles on the doors. 
Then it looks like you have some chrome in the bathroom. I mix polished chrome, pewter, anything in the cool metals family is fair game. Anything in the warm metals family can be mixed no matter the finish. So that's my two cents. Don't get too precious with trying to pick the exact brushed thing that goes with this, that goes with that, because keep in mind, good design is not about being matchy matchy. It's about picking things that go well together, but didn't come together. We don't want it to look like a kitchen set, right? So use that creativity, but maybe think about something different than gold. All right, let me get to your next question. We are considering getting some fun doors for our bathroom and bedrooms. How do you feel about painting doors black or other colors? Since this is not our permanent home and we come here on vacation, as do our Airbnb guests, we are thinking about painting the doors a bright color. It could be fun. We also want a door that's not basic. Maybe it has some windows with glass that's translucent. You can see in the original picture that one bedroom has bright primary colors. That's a nod to pop art in Warhol. We want to paint that door a bright red. The master bedroom is a nod to Hall and stars that lived or visited Palm Springs. We would paint this door and the master bath door black. I think the look would be dramatic. The last door from the hallway is the guest bathroom. We are thinking of going walnut wood with blue tiles in the bathroom. So we're thinking of painting that door blue. What are your thoughts on painting interior doors? Can we get away with it in a vacation rental? Lastly, think of your poop water as a necessary fertilizer for the rebirth of your store. We will have to compare pics of our new renovation look with an email with the subject line from poop to posh. <laughs> I love that idea, Derek. You know, I was just thinking about the same thing. I was talking to somebody, I can't remember who, you know, in the height of the coronavirus about building back better. And I'm rebranding right now. So all the teals and the color palette that I used before with the previous business, it's getting a refresh. And teal is going to be a very small component of our new color palette. And I thought maybe this is an opportunity to express the new color palette. Maybe it's an opportunity to completely rethink the way I'm using the storefront. I've got lots on my mind and I'm not quite ready to invest because my insurance is not paying out as quickly as yours is, Derek. Now let's get to your interior door question. Should you paint your interior doors bold colors that seemingly don't relate to each other? Derek, you've often heard me talk about the two word phrase, right? The style of your space, as well as the feeling of your space. And that two word phrase is really that place that you always come back to, the place where you check in and say, as I'm working, is my space mid-century modern, and then what's the feel? Let's just say cozy mid-century modern. Is the piece that I'm thinking of using, is the artwork evoking cozy mid-century modern? If it's not ticking one or both boxes, it has to go. But in the academy, which is the interior design school that I teach, uh, I added a third word to that two-word phrase. So you keep the style word, you keep the feeling word, but no matter what it is that you're selecting, you add a third checkpoint. Is it sophisticated, right? So it becomes a three word phrase in the academy because we're interior designers trying to give an elevated look, trying to take it beyond just residential or what you might see in just a neighbor's home and making it magazine ready, making it sophisticated. Because, you know, I referenced my personal style a minute ago, talking about you know, basically the Brady Bunch, right? Uh, that's the style that resonates with me. But sometimes, especially in this modern area, that is not so sophisticated, right? So do I think having a variety of colorful doors fits the mid-century vibe? Maybe. Do I think it aligns with, you know, a feeling word that's maybe um, whimsical or fun? Yes. Do I feel it's sophisticated? Absolutely not. I think it might look a little tacky. I think it might look a little like welcome to the Warhol theme room. I think it would really detract in the pictures and make this place look gimmicky rather than high end. And gimmicky isn't going to get you top dollar. Uh, I also think it adds like a number of issues in terms of what color are we painting the trim around the door? You know, when the door gets open and shut a lot, sometimes the paint wears off on the side and now we're able to more clearly see sort of imperfections because the colors are so bold and saturated. 
So for me, that is a hard, hard no. But I appreciate your willingness to step outside the box. Just make that bold choice with your backsplash and not with your door color. All right, Derek, thank you so much for writing in. I can't wait to hear what happens with your from poop to posh renovation. All right, let me go to my next question today. Moni is writing in from Newcastle upon Tyne, England, and she writes, what is the most important skill in interior design? Yes, Moni, as you know, I teach the Interior Design Academy that basically teaches people who want to become interior designers all the skills that they need to both become an interior designer and have business acumen to start their own thing within 10 weeks. It's the same program that I use internally with my own designers when I'm training them to work for me, except of course I've added business modules because my own designers don't need business modules. I'm going to be providing them with business. So I had them watch those same videos and those videos were derived from my one-on-one trainings with my own team. I have lots of thoughts and feelings on what is the most important skill in interior design. Because as I'm teaching new designers, whether they work for me or whether they're going through my academy, I am thinking about, is this person going to please the client? Is this person going to be making changes that help the client space or hurt the client space, right? What is the most important thing that sets an interior designer apart from somebody who just has a good eye or just has a nice taste level, right? So I've given this question lots of thought and I have one distinct answer. The most important thing that an interior designer can learn is space planning, Because I don't care how great your space looks. You have the most amazing eye for design. You just seamlessly know how to put things together. But if the walkways are tight, if when I'm carrying groceries or lifting my child and I'm hitting pieces of furniture or I'm bumping artwork because there wasn't a walkway allotted, or if I'm sitting on the couch and I'm reaching over to put my iced coffee down, And I have to reach over way low to put it down because there's not a good relationship between the height of the table and the height of the sofa arm. Well, the space feels uncomfortable and it looks amateurish. So the most important thing is space planning. How does the room function? Because the actual choices, the artistic choices of color palette, pattern selection, artwork selection, all of that is subjective. And even if I create the most beautiful space in my mind, I may have a client who hates my choices, just doesn't resonate with them. Maybe it doesn't reflect their personality, or maybe they just don't think it's a good design. But nobody can dispute a good layout, a good layout that flows, that maximizes the room, that reuses pieces um, in a really seamless way while integrating new pieces that make the room just make sense. That is something that has to be learned. And that is something that brings immense value because when a person is buying the right size sectional, even if it's in a color that, you know, I might not have picked, right? When a person is buying the right size coffee table, then they're allowing the right amount of space for you to pull out your dining chair without hitting the wall the whole room will feel good. The room will feel comfortable. And that's the most important component is that the room functions well. Of course, I want it to look extremely attractive, but if it doesn't have a good layout, it's not a good design and you're not a good designer. So that's why the core of my program, it has 10 modules and the middle two modules are 100% devoted to layout Because if you cannot create a good layout in every single room, every single time, you are a bad designer. Moni, you know if you come to me, you're going to get the straight story. So I hope you appreciate that. Should I tell you an embarrassing story? This is a very embarrassing story. My husband actually just made fun of me at a dinner party last night. But I'm going to tell it to you guys because um, I'm shameless. Please. I mean, you know that by now. So I was outside last night. Uh, This was kind of a late little party because, um, you know, they wanted to put their kids down to bed. Our babysitter came over, my mother-in-law. And so my husband and I were going to walk down the street to our friend's house to play games and have like a light meal. 
So I'm standing outside our house because my husband is always running behind. I'm standing outside my house with a box of macaroons that we're going to bring and um, just waiting for him to be ready because we're already 15 minutes late. As I'm standing outside, this um, woman and maybe her son are walking down the street, walking their dog. So in my town, nobody's super effusively friendly. I love to wave. I'm from the Midwest. I'm like, hey, how's it going? My husband's from a small town. He's a big waver. Howdy. Around my neighborhood, people just don't do that. But uh, I'm shameless, as I mentioned before. So I was like, hi, how are you? And this woman did something very unusual for our neighborhood. She started to chat. She was like, I'm very good, but I am marveling at the fireflies. And she had an accent, right? A a pretty strong accent. Uh, And I said, oh, they don't have fireflies in Australia? She said, I'm not from Australia. I'm from England. Oh my goodness. My husband just thought that that was horrible. He walked out at the end of our interaction. He was like, Betsy, how could you do that? And I must say, I had recently been designing a space in Sydney. I've been working on this space in Sydney for a client of mine, Fiona. And I think I just had that accent on the brain. But it's very interesting to know that they don't have fireflies in England. And now it's got me wondering, are there fireflies in Australia? I took that vacation to Maine. You guys remember that super horrible vacation. I took that vacation to Maine. And at night, when we would pull up to our country Airbnb, it was like there were fireworks going off in the backyard. There were so many fireflies just flashing, 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 flashing. So my husband and I, in between like brushing our kids' teeth and getting them in jammies, would peek out into the yard just to watch the fireworks show go down. Well, it was such a weird phenomenon. And maybe some of you can explain this. I didn't know anything about this. I still don't technically know, but round about, I don't know, between 1030 and 11, all of a sudden the fireworks stopped. No fireflies at all. Like, do they have a bedtime or something? Because my husband and I would continue to sneak down just to see more of the show and it was pitch black. So I don't know, maybe their lights like run out and they have to recharge their batteries. I'm not sure. If one of you guys knows, if you're an insectologist, please write in, head over to affordableinteriordesign.com slash podcast to set me straight on fireflies and their behavioral patterns. If you're not an insectologist and just have a question for me, please write in affordableinteriordesign.com slash podcast. And see, this is why I ask you to tell me where you're from, because you don't want me to mistake you for an Australian if you're from England. Apparently, that's a big no-no, according to my husband. (laughs) Well, you know, it's the first and last time I try and make conversation in my neighborhood. I don't think she was offended, but ah, another day in paradise, another day in the suburbs. All right, everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful summer. Send me your questions and I'll be talking to you again soon. Bye. You've asked for it and we have answered the call. For years, you've been saying, Betsy, you're talking about all these great design concepts, but we can't visualize them. You're describing the picture that the listener sent in of their problem, and we wish we could see that picture too. After all, a picture is worth a thousand words, and I do my best to describe them, but there's nothing like seeing it for yourself. And that's why Affordable Interior Design, the podcast, now has a YouTube channel. Not only do we have a YouTube channel where you could see recordings and clips of these podcast episodes, we also have an Instagram, a Facebook, and so many other exciting things. You should check it out. Head over to affordableinteriordesign.com slash links. Once again, affordableinteriordesign.com slash L-I-N-K-S links. And when you go there, you will see links to our YouTube page, our Instagram page, our Facebook page, and more. Please check it out, follow and subscribe so you can see everything I'm talking about. A big thank you to our amazing producer, Catherine Heller, to Aton and the MBCR House Band, and to Affordable Interior Design, the sponsor of this podcast and the premier place to get an amazing look on a budget. Check out affordableinteriordesign.com. If you guys love the show, the very best way to support us is by spreading the word. Tell your friends, 
or write us an awesome review on iTunes. So until next week, guys, thanks so much for joining us and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.